Hello everyone, I'm Ella and welcome. So I recently bought my sister her very first phone, which is the purple iPhone 12. And just in case you're wondering why I got her the iPhone 12, it's because she specifically told me that she wanted an iPhone so that she can iMessage and airdrop with her friends. So yeah, that is the very simple reason for why I got her an iPhone. Now I myself have the Samsung S21 and in the past I've actually talked about why I decided to go with a Samsung phone instead of an iPhone. Phone. But now since I do have an actual iPhone in my hands, I thought that I would give it a fair and proper review from my perspective as a Samsung and Android user. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to talk about is just how expensive this phone is. The iPhone 12 is seriously expensive even in comparison with its direct competitors. So just a quick example, the iPhone 12 and the Samsung S21 are very much direct competitors and I feel like most people think that these two phones are actually actually the same price, but they really are not. The iPhone 12 and S21 base models are both 799. However, the iPhone 12 base model is 64 gigabytes, whereas the Samsung S21 base model is 128 gigabytes. And if you want the iPhone 12 to have 128 gigabytes, then that's $50 extra. So that puts us at $849. But if you also don't want the iPhone 12 to come with a SIM card, then that's an extra $30 which I really don't understand. Like, why do I have to pay extra if I just wanna use my own SIM card in this thing? But anyways, so the S21 with 128 gigabytes and no SIM card already in it is 799. And if we want the iPhone 12 to have the same exact specs, that will actually cost $879 which is significantly more. And also buying an S21 actually comes with a few pretty nice perks, including four months of YouTube premium. I actually still have YouTube premium from buying this phone and it is pretty nice. And also both Apple and Samsung have special education discount programs. However, iPhones are actually excluded from that, which I don't really understand because many students do need phones. On the other hand, the S21 is very much included in the program. So I was actually able to get my S21 for around $759. So yeah, as you guys can see, even against arguably its most famous competitor, the iPhone 12 is still significantly more expensive. All right, so now you may be wondering what kind of great, amazing accessories come with this $900 plus phone because there's tax. Well, you get a single USB-C to lightning cable, this thing right here, as well as an Apple sticker. And yeah, that is all that's in there. You don't get a wall charger because Apple says that everyone already has one and they're trying to save the environment. But actually, it's very unlikely that a first time phone user like my sister will have a compatible wall charger. And even if many people already did have wall chargers, it's more likely that they are quite old so they can only charge at five watts, which is really slow for these modern phones. The iPhone 12 actually needs a 20 watt charger in order to charge at its maximum speed. And practically nobody besides laptop users will have a charging brick that can charge at 20 watts. Even the iPad charger can only charge at 18 watts. And like, I do have a 20 watt charger because I have a MacBook, but I don't wanna share that thing between my laptop and my phone. That is just very inconvenient. The Apple isn't the only company doing this. Samsung also didn't include a wall charger with its S21 phones, even though the S21 phones can charge at 25 watts. So that just means that you're basically forced to spend more money if you want to use one of the most important features of these new phones, which is fast charging. And that kind of really sucks because these new phones are already hella expensive. I really do hope that this will change in the future. All right, now let's talk about the actual phone itself. The purple color is super gorgeous looking and also it has flat edges. I remember my first phone, which was an iPhone 5S, also had flat edges. So it seems like these flat edges have made a comeback and I do like them, so not complaining. Now as for the screen, it does look really good. It is a 6.1 inch OLED screen and its resolution is between 1080 and 2K. Just for reference, the iPhone 11 had an LCD screen with below 1080p resolution. So the iPhone 12 screen is definitely a big improvement. Typically OLED screens have much better color 
and contrast and LCD screens, and they would be very good for HDR videos, which I am beginning to see on YouTube. However, the kind of unfortunate thing is that the screen refresh rate is only 60 hertz, and especially coming from my S21, which does have a 120 hertz refresh rate, the iPhone 12 with 60 hertz just doesn't feel as smooth, especially when scrolling, the difference is especially noticeable. With 120 hertz, I can still see the text clearly when scrolling, whereas with 60 hertz, when I'm scrolling at about the same rate, I can't really. And here's another instance where I can see the difference pretty clearly. When I'm switching between the pages, I can tell that the 120 hertz screen does look smoother. Now, I just want to clarify that 60 hertz is completely fine. It does not feel laggy or anything, especially if you're not coming from a 120 hertz screen. However, 120 hertz is just like a premium. 120 hertz does give a noticeably better and smoother experience. So I do wish that the iPhone 12 had 120 hertz. Okay, and next I want to talk about customization on the iPhone. Over the past few days, I did force my sister to let me play with her phone. So I did pretty extensively experience around with different widgets and also customizing the app icons and I have to say I really like the look of the widgets and you can also download apps like Widgetsmith and color widgets that will give you very aesthetic looking widgets. However, the one thing that I found that really disappointed me is that the widgets are not interactive at all. They really can only display information or just simply act as a piece of decoration on your phone. And there are some widgets that I feel like just should be interactive, but they're not. For example, the Spotify, Calendar, and Reminder widgets are all very much interactive on my S21 phone, and they should be. Like, it totally makes sense for them to be interactive. However, on the iPhone 12, they are not interactive. They are essentially just like big buttons. They do look really nice, but they just lack functionality, which is certainly a bit disappointing. Okay, and as for customizing the app icons, this went completely viral when iOS 14 first came out. Everyone loved this and was doing it, but there actually used to be this problem where it would take you to the shortcuts page first, and then it would open the app, which is obviously not ideal since you would want to be directly taken to the app. But the good news is Apple did fix it 90%. <laughs> so now what happens is, when when you tap on one of these custom icons, you get taken directly to the app, but then you get a notification pop-up from the Shortcuts app. Now, I really dislike and don't understand this. Like Apple saw how iPhone users loved being able to customize their app icons, so then they decided to optimize that experience, and they did, but only 90% of the way. They still leave an annoying 10%, which is the little pop-up notification thing. And like, yes, the little pop-up notification is less annoying than before, but it is still pretty annoying. And if this were my iPhone, I certainly would not be customizing my apps just because I value functionality over aesthetics. So yeah, my overall thoughts about iPhone customization is that you can make it super pretty, the most aesthetic and Pinterest worthy thing possible, but the customizations just lack functionality. And just quickly mentioning Android customization, on my Android phone, I can quickly apply a theme which does make the phone very, very aesthetic looking and also the design of all the widgets are very nice and many of the widgets are interactive. Now there are some features that the iPhone 12 does have that I like that my S21 does not have. I really like how on the iPhone I can hide a screen. I'll show you what I mean by that right now. And also the app library is automatically organized for you. I think that's a pretty nice feature.
And of course, we need to talk about the cameras of these two phones. So the iPhone only has two lenses. One of them is the regular lens that can go up to five times zoom. And the second one is the ultra wide lens. My S21 does have three lenses, a regular lens, an ultra wide lens, as well as a telephoto lens, which actually allows the S21 to zoom up to 30 times. Obviously photos taken at a very high zoom don't look very good. However, I think that this feature can be helpful when you're trying to read a sign that's very far away, or if you're a student and you like to sit at the very, very back of the lecture hall, well, when we have in-person learning again, and you cannot see the whiteboard, then you can use your 30 times zoom to see what's going on. But yeah, other than that, um, I really can't think of another advantage of the incredibly high zoom. I did take some photos and videos using both phones and now I will show you the results. Okay, so photo quality wise, both are definitely great. I feel like the S21 produces more vibrant colors, but depending on your preferences, this could be considered either a feature or a bug. For the ultra wides, I forgot to make the aspect ratios the same, so please forgive me for that. But I think the ultra wides on both phones look amazing with a 120 degree field of view. The iPhone selfie cam looks really good and it even blurs the background slightly in a very natural looking way that I really like. The S21 selfie cam is very decent as well, but it doesn't really blur the background. So I think in terms of the selfie cam, I would prefer the iPhone over the S21. Now, the iPhone zoom is really not it. The S21 has much better zoom because it does have the third telephoto lens, whereas the iPhone does not. And as for the portrait mode, so the best way that I can describe this is that it just looks like phone portrait. You know, it's not always perfect. I feel like the background blur and the subject just look a bit too jarring, which then makes it quite obvious that this was produced by a phone and not a real camera. The S21 portrait is really not any better better. Again, the contrast between the subject and the background is quite jarring. And sometimes the S21 just like misses completely. So I would say use the phone portrait at your own risk. Sometimes your photos will just come out really wonky looking. And that's why I personally don't really use the phone portrait at all, just because there is a fairly high chance that it will not turn out well. Oh man. Okay. Now let's talk about the night mode. So um, the iPhone just like completely failed. Like I don't look like this, I promise you guys. And neither does my sweatshirt. My sweatshirt is not reflective at all. So I don't know if it's because I'm wearing this bright white sweatshirt that caused the iPhone to fail. But in this instance, the iPhone night mode failed pretty miserably. The S21 night mode turned out much better. I look much more normal looking and I think the quality looks pretty good. And lastly, the video quality. So the iPhone video is really nice. It's very smooth and clear. The S21 video is also pretty good, but I would say it's not as smooth and clear looking as the iPhones, especially when I'm moving the phone, the image becomes kind of blurry. So video wise, I would say the iPhone is slightly better than the S21. All right, and now I wanna talk about some features that the iPhone doesn't have that I certainly do miss. And the first one is Google Assistant. The iPhone 12 does have Siri, which is I guess like the equivalent, but Google Assistant is much better than Siri when it comes to smart home control. There are just far more smart home devices that support Google Assistant compared to Siri. And yes, of course, you can download the Google Assistant app on the iPhone. However, you will have to open up the app every time you wanna use Google Assistant, which just makes it not very convenient. On my phone, I can just say, okay, Google, Turn on my lights. Okay, turning the tree lights on. I think Siri is okay. It's cool. 
but Google Assistant is just more useful. Okay, and the other feature that I wish the iPhone did have is a feature that's similar to Smart Lock on Android phones. On my S21, I can set it so that when my phone is on me or in a trusted place or near a trusted device like my smartwatch, then it will be unlocked. And currently on the iPhone, the only way to unlock it without using the Face ID and the passcode is with an Apple Watch. So that is better than nothing, but the options are not as many as on my S21. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Overall, I do think that the iPhone is a great and fantastic phone. If I didn't, then I wouldn't have bought it for my sister. <laughs> iPhones can last a while and they also have really good resale value. So I think they are a safe choice for many people. But I just think that my Samsung S21 has certain features that are just better, like the 120 Hertz refresh rate, as well as the customizability. And yeah, that's it. That is my iPhone review. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see more tech content from me. I also have some links down below, my Instagram, my Amazon, as well as a Chrome extension that I made. So if any of those interest you, then be sure to check out the links down below. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!